Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. Oh. Yes, big walleye, super taker. <laughs> big fish. Oh my goodness, that monster, monster pocket. <laughs> We are headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Got him. All right. That's what smallmouth fishing is all about right there. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Good morning, everyone. James Holst here with In-Depth Outdoors. Now, before we get into today's show, I want to talk a little bit about techniques. And one of my favorites, of course, is fishing jigs and plastics. Uh, so far already this year, if you've been watching our show, you've seen a couple very good jig and plastics show. The one up on the Rainy River, when I fished with Chris Granrud. Of course, we caught almost endless numbers of giant walleyes. And more recently, we had a great show from Pool 4 in the Mississippi River at Red Wing, where we showed how to drag jigs and plastics for early season walleyes on the Mississippi River. Of course, you start watching those shows, and what tends to happen is guys start to think that the only way to use these baits, jigs and plastics, is on rivers and in the spring. Nothing can be further from the truth. So that's what today's show is all about. So what we did is we uh, headed out to Webster, South Dakota to fish with in-depth outdoors pro staffer, Quentin Bierman. And what's very unique about this area is the lakes around Webster tend to be very shallow. They tend to have a stained water clarity and they're very wind influenced. And by that I mean uh, these lakes absolutely kick up and turn on anytime there's good wind. But we're out on the prairie. We're fishing South Dakota. It's always windy. The time period was mid-July, so this is not an early season show. And we picked this time period for a very specific reason. We wanted to show people that these jigs and plastics are effective throughout the entire summer. Not just in Webster, South Dakota. I use the same presentation as a confidence bait on just about every lake I fish throughout the entire year. So if you love fishing jigs and plastics, if you use that presentation typically in the spring on rivers, make sure you watch this show and incorporate what you see see here into the rest of the season as you're chasing walleyes across the Midwest. Stick around, I think you're going to like the show. There's fish. Yeah, hard to know how big he is. Hit it real good. Nice. First fish of the day right there, boy. Look at that. Oh. Bit somebody off. We got a hook with that fish, and we got some sinkers with that fish. We'll deal with that in a second. That's a long looking fish there. Got a tag on it, James. Yeah, it does. Experimental Reg Lake. This is a uh, lake that uh, has a slot limit on it, and they're doing some tagging to study the population. Real nice walleye. And uh, everybody thinks plastics are for uh, spring, but I tell you what, in a situation like this, you got a uh, stained water lake, lots of fish up shallow feeding around these trees. A lot of times, plastics will produce all summer long. That's that uh, Moxie from Bee Fish and Tackle, rigged on a 3 ounce sour apple head. Stained water like this, that's a real consistent producer for me. Confidence bait, if you will. So we'll let that fish go. There you go, sweetheart. Nice to meet you. Off she goes. Wonderful start. Tell me about the, the tag process. Game and Fish tags a fish, and then basically you call the fisheries office out of Wabe, and the guys over there are gonna give you a report. When the fish was tagged, what it weighed when it was caught, how long it was, and then if you can give them a rough estimate and the number, tag number, length, then they just go off that to see how some of the fish are growing. Well, now I wish I would have wrote down the number. It had been kind of cool to have that number to check and see when that fish was caught and how long it was. The next one will do that, right? Not that you catch two of those in a day. <laughs> oh, fish on. Need net? Yeah, maybe. No, I don't, I don't. It's a smallie. Smallie? Yeah. Not a big one, not a huge one.
dragon jig on a half a crawler right up in the timber. It's a little guy. I would imagine there's almost nobody out here fishing for the bass on purpose, huh? No, not at all. They're pretty under target as the smallmouth are. The lakes up north receive a little more pressure for the bass, but a lot of good bass out here that are go pretty much completely untouched. Untouched, yeah. Fish. All righty. Just fishing a little bit deeper weed line here. Got the wind pushing up into the weeds. Kind of a perfect scenario. The key here is just to find the distance that you need to keep the boat from those weeds because you get those jigs down, falls in that vegetation, you immediately get kind of globbed up. Nothing's going to hit that. Come on, sweetheart. Come see me. That's a nice fish. Ah! And Quentin's an ace with the net. There you go. There you go. Well, nice I don't hit. need to tell you what we caught that one on. That's that moxie still. Got kind of a two-step pattern going on here. Quentin's fishing that dragon jig with live bait, fishing a crawler, and I'm fishing uh, the moxie on that 316 ounce head. Real nice fish, Quentin. Yeah, nice one. Low 20s. Yeah. Back you go, brother. That was a banger. <laughs> I just brought it off those weeds and pow. Yeah. Right where those cattails start to thin out along the shoreline there. Yeah. There's something going on because I had two solid whacks. I got a bite while you were kind of doing your tag thing. Sure. First cast, just short stroked me a little bit. Fish, fish. There we go. We're putting a pattern together here, brother. Yeah. Now a little wind blowing in these weed lines, seeming to work. The biggest trick is just keeping the jig out of the, those snotty weeds. This one's coming over the other side. I think it's gonna be about the uh, same size as that last one, which is, you know, a real quality fish. You know what, Quentin? I'm just gonna scoop this one by hand. Sounds good. I appreciate it. I bet you there's another one right back there waiting for you. Yeah. Forget how tall these 2100s are. That's a nice fish. Turn him around. Take a look at that bait there. This is such a confidence bait for me. Give me a moxie, give me a jig head. If there's walleyes in the body of water, I usually feel like I can catch them. And look at that. I thought you said they don't tag very many of these. Yeah. I got another one. That's about a 19 and a half inch fish. Second one of the day. Looks like a real healthy fish. Back you go, sweetheart. Nice. Awesome. Two of them in a day. I got to make up for my mistake. I've thrown it back. <laughs> I can't believe you caught two in a day. <laughs> That's that golden horseshoe, brother. Awesome. Well, cool. A pair of innovative designs with proven fish catching colors. The result, we fish and tackles Authentex plastics. The Moxie, with its thin profile, beefy belly, and long tail moves and vibrates at slow speeds more than any other plastic on the market today. The perfect cure for cold front walleye. The Pulsar features a paddle tail that twitches and kicks seductively when fished super slow. Producing more body movement than any other paddle tail style bait. Find them online at beefishandtackle.com before your fishing buddies do. This just in. Search now over for one suspect found hiding under a brush pile. Suspect was taken into custody and released this afternoon. Officials credit the apprehension to the new Markham underwater camera technology, which found and caught the suspect. Markham has really taken the lead with their on-screen displays for temperature, depth, and direction, helping you get to the fish quicker. In other news, a missing walleye was captured today, once again caught red-handed on a Markham camera. Stay tuned for more news from the Markham Underwater Network, where we seek, find, and capture the lake's most wanted. Boy, did he hit that. Woo! That was mean mama walleye. With the wind blowing the boat the way it is, it'll probably come up on, well, maybe not. I think she's gonna do me a favor here. If the hit is indicative of the size of the fish, this is gonna be about a 30 pounder. <laughs> There's the leader. Come on, sweetheart. I'm gonna say about a four pounder. Nope. Woo -hoo -hoo. This guy's been drinking Red Bull. Quentin, I was gonna guess mid 20 inch fish. It's a nice fish. Yeah. But that fish just stroked that bait. I live for that. You know, when it gets right down to it, the reason I fish plastics for walleyes, you know, they're effective. It's that hit though. How hard these fish wallop that plastic. These fish are so clean, just great looking. All right, sweetheart, back you go. What a nice fish. All righty. Full of vinegar. Fish. <laughs> Walleyes next to a weed field. Love it. 
Woo, that's a nice fish. <laughs> you haven't moved that fast since you were blocking uh, for the offensive line, huh? Yeah, I don't think so. Wow. Nice. A nice one, James. There we go. This is all right. Let me tell you, that's a nice fish there. <laughs> we were just commenting, you know, oh, it's so pretty. We're fishing next to a weed field. This is what it's all about. Yeah, the sights and sounds, that's a plus. This fish seals the deal for me. Down in there. Man, they're just inhaling these baits. And this isn't early season. It's middle of July, people. A lot of guys make the mistakes of taking those plastics and putting them away come summer, but under the right conditions, like we have today, we got some wind blowing into the shallows here. You can put the hurt on some really nice fish. All right, sweetheart, back you go. There we go. That's the best one of the day so far, Quentin. Yeah, nice fish. The fun thing about these lakes is you can fish shallow stuff basically all year with the right wind. And that's what drew me out here, just because it's it's such an aggressive style of fishing. You're up, you're moving, it's plastics and cranks. It's not, you know, live baiting, which, you know, we both grew up doing around Minnesota, you know, humps and drop-offs. But the fun stuff is, like you said, middle of July, and it can be, it can be 80, 90, 100 degrees out here, and you're casting into two, three, four, five foot of water on these weed edges of plastics and stuff, and the fish are just on the chow. We probably should do some experimenting with colors and stuff, and we just keep catching fish, so <laughs> there's not a lot of incentive to do it. But, no. You know, if I had to pick just a couple colors, stained or clear, or you know, northern Minnesota glacial lakes, or come out here and fish devils, or these lakes around Webster, this chartreuse orange core has just always been dynamite. And I would imagine it's because it's got that orange and that uh, yellow color kind of imitating a perch, you know, the, the bright colors on a perch. Yeah. Should we switch colors and make one more run through there, or do you think we should just take off? What do you think? I mean, you think trigger a couple more? Or? Let's trigger some more. I like yeah. the idea of uh, getting more fish there. The key here is just to find the distance that you need to keep the boat from those weeds. Hello, I'm Dave Markworth. I'd like to introduce you to the Skeeter Boat Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At the Skeeter Boat Center, we carry the Midwest's largest selection of Skeeter fishing boats, all at prices you can afford. And we offer test drives on most models in stock. Our highly trained staff will provide you the personalized service that you deserve. So check us out at SkeeterBoatCenter.com, where our goal is to help you have fun fishing. At Skeeter Boats, our passion for turning great ideas into even better fishing boats has produced an unmatched lineup of models intended to fit the way you fish. Like the WX series, designed to handle big water in tough conditions, including the new MX1825, built from the ground up to be the ultimate 18-foot fishing boat, and Skeeter Bass Boats, setting the standard for speed and fishability. Skeeter, engineered like no other. Man, that one was up deep. Went to a little bit heavier head. You can see we've got the sun popping out now, but uh, we've got the, a real change in conditions here. So we pulled off those weed lines, got out here around these trees where we know we've got deeper water, and we're anticipating that these walleyes are gonna pull off the real shallow structure, that weed line, and come out here around these trees where they can hang in eight, 10 foot of water. That's a nice fish. Fishing the same baits, went to a little bit heavier head so we can get down in that deeper water. Yes. It's a nice fish. Was fishing that jig real slow back to the boat, trying to work those deeper depths. These trees are in deeper water, it's great cover. We've got the wind busting in here. With these higher skies, we're getting more light penetration. We just figured these fish are gonna move out into a little bit deeper water. There we go. Yeah! How's that feel? Nice fish, feels nice, heavy. Oh yeah. Nice. Is that a, a one extension fish or two? <laughs> that is a nice fish, buddy. Awesome. There we go. Nice fish, a little bit longer. Casting up into that timber again, and Gene's been showing you too. Just inhaling that bee fish and moxie and the precision jig. The jig is just implanted in there. Got that needle nose there. This is a needle nose day. Here we go locked in place. They're back in the water, just a great fish. 
lot of fun. There you go, girl. So much fun. Oh, she goes. Fish. That fish just grabbed that bait and just shook. That's a nice walleye. This is a really good pattern on a great lake. Nice. He was way up top and he just had to roll down in there. <laughs> Quentin, thank you. It's another nice fish. Quentin, you're not gonna believe this. I have the third tagged fish of the day for me. Look at this. That is nuts. And that's about an 18 and a half, 19 inch fish. Pretty similar to the last one. I think the last one was about 19 and a half. How long ago did they tag these fish? They did, uh, recently they most tagged just a bunch now in April. Did nettings nice. and samplings. Let him go. Well, I'm three tagged fish on my first day out here, Quentin. Hat trick. Hat trick, exactly right. Three tags, <laughs> that's awesome. And one of the things I'm doing out here on lakes, in the rivers, I'll leave these moxies whole. In the summer, when the forage is a lot smaller, what I'll do is I'll come back about two ribs behind that head, and I'll just pinch it off. And I think just changing the size, the profile of that bait makes a big difference until we get into late summer, early fall, when the forage available gets a lot larger. Just a tiny little adaptation that I feel makes a huge difference to the number of fish I catch on plastics midsummer. Quentin, give me a breakdown on what you have out here in the Webster area for lakes. And I know uh, you've got a lot of lakes and a lot of lakes will produce this type of pattern. A lot of the lakes around here, like you know, we've talked before, there's not a lot of structure, so the fish are gonna be forced to, you know, feed in the weed lines or feed in flooded timber and you know, Lynn, Horseshoe, you know, Reeds Lake, Wabe Lake, Bitter Lake, all have flooded timber, all have weed lines, and you know, a great bite sets up from May through, you know, virtually August and uh the perch bite too in a lot of these lakes, you know, bitter and wabe, big giant basin lakes, you know, guys are getting out there covering a lot of water, you know, jigging, drifting live bait for perch, and then you know, this is Day County Webster. You look up into the Marshall County area, you know, you get into uh you know Roy Lake and Clear Lake, which are you know just turned into excellent smallmouth fisheries. So as a person, you know, living out here, the opportunities are endless and Northern pike are just thick, great eating pike. You know, if you like to take, keep them, you know, in that three to four, five pound class. And, uh, you know, Bitter and Wabe Lake are starting to kick out some big northerns. Guys are having, you know, just awesome luck casting plugs on weed lines. And I mean, giving the walleye fishermen fits too along the way. Well, what I think is really interesting is the fact that, you know, here we're middle of July. Uh, we've had a run of 85, 90 degree weather that in a lot of areas, uh, particularly back in Minnesota where we had those deep clear lakes, the walleye fishing gets tough. I mean, it's downright skunky. And you come out here to these stained water, uh, shallow lakes, and it just seems like these warmer temperatures absolutely energize the bite. You know, so for a walleye angler looking for a great midsummer bite, uh, this Webster area is just dynamite. Yeah, you say that, James. The nice thing about it too is, I mean, for people looking to come and go on a trip, it's a great drive to fishery and area and you know and you can do it the lakes run you can come do this in a 16 foot boat you know today we're out here in this big skeeter with a 300 horse yamaha it seems kind of ironic but i mean a 16 foot boat and a 30 horse and you're good to go on just about every water and you can always find a place to get out of the wind get out of the you know rough water out here i know it's too far away but there's a guy over here fishing in a kayak i saw that <laughs> that's small water man oh ho, oh, ho, ho. no More smallies <laughs> Yeah, we were just talking about the multi-species opportunities, you know, if you like to fish smallmouth, there's, these are coming along too here. They are just such hard fighters, especially next to the boat. You just, you get them here in the last six feet of line out and you just can't even move them. Come on, Dolly. Just such a nice fish, chunky fat right up on the timber and just inhaled that moxie. Nice heavy fish. There's something else to add, a little bonus to the day there. A couple small moths. Oh, you get your back, and off she goes. Just hammered that back with that chartreuse orange core, and gonna need a new one, and then a pea fish and precision jig there. Need a new one? Yep. I'm your buddy. James said earlier too in the lakes, I kind of adopted his pattern, ripping off that top little head and a couple ribs down, and just hooking that up, seeming to help here a little bit in these lakes. Let's get back out there and get another one. Well, cool.
year of innovative designs with proven fish catching colors. The result, Be Fish and Tackle's Authentex Plastics. The Moxie, with its thin profile, beefy belly, and long tail moves and vibrates at slow speeds more than any other plastic on the market today. The perfect cure for cold front walleye. The Pulsar features a paddle tail that twitches and kicks seductively when fished super slow. Producing more body movement than any other paddle tail style bait. Find them online at BeFishAndTackle.com before your fishing buddies do. Hello, I'm Dave Markworth. I'd like to introduce you to the Skeeter Boat Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. At the Skeeter Boat Center, we carry the Midwest's largest selection of Skeeter fishing boats, all at prices you can afford. And we offer test drives on most models in stock. Our highly trained staff will provide you the personalized service that you deserve. So check us out at SkeeterBoatCenter.com, where our goal is to help you have fun fishing. Wow, did that fish hit. Woo! <laughs> you know, again. I crawled that jig out so slow out in the deep water, and I bet you it's going to be a dandy. You know, I do a lot of jig fishing early in the season, and to be able to come out here midsummer when these fish are just tuned up. Nice. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> what a fish. Check that out. Just inhaling these baits, pummeling it. Can I grab a needle nose from you? There I'm you gonna go. need it. Hey, absolutely engulf that. Hey, I'm doing you a favor, sweetheart. All right, back she goes. South Dakota, Webster area, just digging it. There we go. Awesome bite, straight down. You know, what really sets the moxie apart is the tail. Um, it's so much different than what you'll see on uh, like a twister tail. Um, it's got a very fine auger, and on the point of it, there's actually a ball uh, that creates kind of a whipping action to the tail. And what that really uh, accomplishes is uh, this tail works so well at low speeds. And while these fish are aggressively feeding, they're hitting plastics. Uh, so you know they're on a good feed. They're not willing to chase anything fast moving. To get a tail to move on a twister tail, you gotta move it pretty quickly through the water. And that's not what these fish want. So that moxie and that unique tail is really what makes this bite happen. There we go. <laughs> hey, hey, right below the boat. Ooh. You need a scoop? Yeah. What a nice one. Smack that moxie up there in that shallow water again and open this one up for you a little. He just got it down way in the back of his mouth. He's crushing that jig. Surface temperatures, 77 degrees, 76.7. They look pretty healthy to me. Yeah, nice fish. Let that one go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Double! They're stacked in there, James. Well, who's gonna get the net? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I believe I owe you, owe you a scoop. Choop, choop, ding. There we go. Take your pick. Oh, my jig's out. There we go. Awesome. Good stuff. You got my uh, rod there with you. I'm like a giddy school kid, man. This is my favorite way to catch walleyes. Yeah, that's a, a nice pair right there. I just inhaled that jig. Right, when they decide to finally eat it, Donkey Kong. South Dakota, Webster area, catching fish, shallow, jigs and plastics. Fun stuff. Going this way. Awesome bite. Inhaling that plastic again. Off he goes. Well, we got some rain coming in. That usually precedes the uh, thunderstorm. Even though we've got the, the sun still peeking through the clouds, uh, it's peeking over the top of a thunderhead. So we're gonna call it a day. Webster, South Dakota, fishing these prairie lakes, getting real aggressive, getting right up in the timber. Just been a phenomenal day. Um, I'd like to fish out here until dark, but this is one of those days where I really won't regret going home early. Quentin, Thanks much, man. Awesome day. Not a problem. Glad to come out and see what I do all the time out here in the Dakotas. It's great, fun fishing. Woo! Now let's run for our lives, man. <laughs> <laughs>
For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know. 